Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here from Fort Dean Peak at Origins 2017. I'm sitting down with James Campbell, who's brought us the world's best packaging. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I should mention, you're with Gut Shot Games. Yes, I am. And these are head hunters. And um, unlike every other shelfie that we probably do, we want you to throw the box away as soon as possible. I asked uh, where it was when you yeah. came on. And this is the box. This is the box. This so is the box. inside the head of every head hunter is everything you need to play a card driven skirmish game. So this is a five and a, a quarter inch collectible toy, and everything you need to play is here. So it is a measured movement game. So the first thing you see is this is a measuring string. Short, medium, long range. It's an open table game, so there's no board required. So the next thing we have is the combat dice. All the combat's gonna be resolved via the dice. You have two battle platforms. Your toy, I'm gonna move this one for a second. Your toy is always gonna be on a battle platform or on terrain. Every character has four unique starting terrain, and they're unique to that. So think of this as not only you get a cool toy, but you have a theme deck. The deck here is very different and plays very different than the deck here. Right. So Eric, pretty much a meat and potatoes guy, he's gonna run up and punch you in the face. <laughs> Zeno, our assassin robot from the future, has a kind of a jack of all trades thing going on. Um, so and it starts with the terrain. So there's always one unique terrain and three repeating terrain. Now the unique terrain, all the terrain has blocking sides, you can't move in and out of, you can't tack in and out of, and open sides, you can move in and out of. For example, Badru's here, and, all, and your unique one has a diamond, and it's going to have a special ability just for your character. So when Badru here enters this terrain, he gets to rotate it any way he Whee! wants. But only he gets to do that special ability. Now his other terrain works with anyone. So this is an oasis. When any wounded character enters here, they get to roll a die, and as long as they roll at least one starburst, they get to heal themselves. If they don't, it was a mirage, and that's removed from the game. <laughs> so, very themed to who the characters are themselves. So, in addition to the terrain, every character has five unique health tiles. Again, everything, including how we track our health and score, is included in the head. Every character has five, so everybody has five health no matter who you are. This is going to tell you a few things. How much health you have remaining, how far you can move, and any special abilities you may have. Um, oh, it's come in as correct, you start getting injured. Right? And it's only good for that level. So when you're down to two, Eric starts getting mad. Now his melee attacks are powerful, <laughs> so they have plus one essentially. But now he looks at his string, and he's only able to move this far on the string. When he gets down to one, he's only moving this far. So it's constantly changing who the, depending on who the character is. So on our turn, we get to do a basic move and then play up to two cards or take two actions. Typically, you use actions to play cards. And so all the magic happens from the card deck itself. There's no building attacks to the character. So on your turn, you typically have a hand size of three. I'm going to show a couple variety of cards here. These are attacks. This is a melee attack. To do a melee attack, you'd have to be right next to another character, like this. Right next to the other character. Um, so those are, there's attacks, there's ranged attacks, there's melee attacks, there's special abilities. There's even move cards. If you don't like where you move to, you can actually play a move card to get into an even better position. And positioning in this game is very important. So, I'm gonna for, play for example, let's say, let's set up a little example where I'm here and Badru's over here. Now, first thing I do is I play the card. Now we roll dice. Slide them up just a little bit here, Let me steal this dice. I'm gonna roll for attack. I'm looking for swords, go ahead, you're gonna roll. Okay, I'm rolling. You're looking for shields. shields. Ties go to the defender. So right now it looks very good for you. But there's a whole lot of ways we put in the game to mitigate for the randomness and luckiness of the dice. And the biggest is advantage. If I was smart enough to get behind you, <laughs> I would have advantage. So think of this as a wild. I would actually have four here. Since it's my game, I get to point you that way. No. And so I would have, <laughs> I would have uh, wounded you. Now, no matter how much I beat you by, you're only taking one wound. We're just solving for that piece, okay? Now, it wouldn't be fair if only attackers had advantage. Attacker has advantage by being anywhere behind the, uh, the defender, either in melee range right next to, or just regular uh, as a range attack um, uh, far away. Yeah, like with our, our crossbow here. Correct. 
But a defender can also have advantage. If they are in any terrain, whether it's theirs or not, they have advantage versus a range attack. So they would have counted those as actually shields. So that's one way for a defender to have advantage. The other way is if we're face to face in a melee attack. Okay? So think of this as the, um, as the defender sees it coming, they're able to actually have a bit of advantage. Okay. The game takes about 20 minutes. It's designed by Ben Chichowski and Danny Mandel. They also did the Legendary Encounters Aliens and Legendary Encounters Predators game. They also did the World of Warcraft trading card game. And some of the flavor you still see in the game from some of their experiences, as one of my cards on my turn, the one or two cards I can play, so I can opt to choose a defense card face down. You don't know what it is, you know I did something. When you come to attack me, I'm gonna say, aha, uh -huh, flip this over, and, I, and it's gonna have I an outcome of the, the attack. Defense. And this uh, is blessing. if I actually successfully defend against an attack from you, I get an immediate counter attack without playing any cards, uh, either range or melee. And at the end of the day, all of this stuff goes back inside of the head of the toy, and this is what sits on your game shelf. Now, because you had mentioned that these are collectible, yep. when you're purchasing these, are you got getting each one individually? Each one individually. You, right, yep. so you can really sort of pick which one might speak to you the most. Absolutely. Initially. Yep. Um, it, was there any inspiration for wanting to make these be essentially displayable storage cases? So, um, I'm the inventor. I'm a horrible game designer. I just <laughs> want to say that. Um, in 2007, um, there was a big movement of designer toys. So, like, this was before Funko Pops. Everybody sees it and they're like, oh, Funko Pops. Actually, Trexies used to be these really cool designer toys. Trexies was the inspiration for me. They had these big heads, and I thought it'd be really good because I love board games first and foremost. How do you put components in there and make it work? So, I designed the first toy and the game to go along with it, and it was horrible. <laughs> and um, it just played bad. It was more of a roll and move game than anything else. And about two years ago, I teamed up with Ben and Danny, who just loved the idea, and they created a great game to go along with it and that's how we got to where we are today now um, we were on we did we were just on Kickstarter for about 10 days we were going to um, unlock all 10 but we weren't in a place where we were going to unlock all 10 and we heard some great feedback the feedback was one the toys are cute but they look they don't match the le devil level of the game or the depth of the game so we're going to make the toys look a little more menacing. Now we can only do that so much because at the end of the day, they're big-headed <laughs> right. big toys. But they are gonna look a little bit serious. And they wanted uh, characters that they already knew or familiar with. So this fall, we're gonna be launching Headhunters Gods. There will be four characters, God-themed. So there will be um, Thor, Anubis, Athena, and then one, um, we're looking to make sure we have one from Chinese mythology, G G Greece mythology, um, Nor uh, Norse mythology, and then uh, we, we want to make sure we have everything covered. Uh, so that's our goal. We'll be launching Headhunters Gods this uh, on Oct in October on Kickstarter. That's a lot of game and a little noggin. There is, yes. <laughs> that will be our first wave, then we'll be, uh, we'll be releasing three waves over the next 12 months. Fairy Tales will be early next year. Fantastic. Well, James, thank you so much for uh, letting us take a look. And with, by the way, movable arms, just in oh, case anybody. Movable arms. Let me tell you why it's movable arms. Please. All of them oh. come with their own weapon. No. So these are all prototypes again, but all Is characters. This his? Yep. All yes. characters. Now, <laughs> if you want to, uh, the decks. There is deck building. So there's six groups of six pods in the deck. If you want to use his weapon, you actually have to to, um, to take his weapon cards along with him. Okay. Well, if this is making you super awesome, uh, super happy as it is me, <laughs> <laughs> that is Headhunters. And James, thank you so much for letting us take a look. Thank you very much. Thank you.